Thank you, Mr. President. At the outset, I wish to congratulate the new members of the Council for beginning their terms. Mr. President, the Houthis' attacks on maritime trade are not merely an escalation, nor are they a spillover. It did not happen magically by itself. This reality is a glimpse into the dark future of the region and the entire globe if action is not taken. This is just the beginning of a chaotic Middle East that will drag the rest of the world into chaos. Distinguished Council Members, as we speak, the Middle East is on fire. For years, all moderate countries in the region have faced the growing threat of radical terrorists. Hezbollah, Hamas, and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad have been attempting to tighten a noose of terror around Israel's borders. Shiite terror groups in Iraq have been firing drones and rockets at U.S. military bases and have also attacked the United Arab Emirates. The Houthis have carried out numerous missiles and drone attacks on critical Saudi Arabian and Emirati infrastructure, including on Aramco oil facilities, as well as the Abu Dhabi International Airport. Three months ago, four Bahraini servicemen were killed in a Houthis attack. And now the Houthis have declared war on both Israel and the United States and proceeded to attack ships in the Red Sea, threatening freedom of navigation, maritime security, and international commerce. These terrorists could not care less about international law. They could not care less about this council. They don't even recognize your existence. Colleagues, this is definitely not an Israel problem. This is not even a Middle East problem. This is a global problem. 12% of global commerce passes through the Suez Canal. Nearly 10% of the global oil demand traverses this passage as well. The Houthis threat in the Red Sea is now forcing ships to go around the Horn of Africa, turning a 16-hour transit into a 24-day journey. And if you want to talk numbers, the complete closure of the Bab el-Mandeb Strait will cost the global economy over $6 billion per day. I hope we can all fully comprehend the absurdity of this situation. The Houthi terrorists, which are armed and funded by a UN member state, are flagrantly attacking ships flying any flag. These are British ships, a Japanese ship, a Singaporean ship, ships flying bah bah <coughs> fle Bahamanian flags, and ships flying Panamanian flags. These are blatant terror attacks against diverse global targets. This is the epitome of an international terror threat. Council members, today must be far more than a wake-up call. Today, we must act. This council has already acknowledged the Houthis as a terror group. Now is the time to enforce sanctions against them and all those who arm and fund them. It's time for this Council to address the radioactive Shiite elephant in the room. The Ayatollah regime is the one thing that, this, that ties together all the elements of destruction in the Middle East. It funds, arms, trains, and directs the Houthis, Hamas, Hezbollah in Lebanon, other terror groups in Syria and Iraq, and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Iran has spent decades spreading cancerous jihadism across the region. Iran seeks to dominate the Middle East and beyond under their Shiite hegemony, and their weapons are armies of terror proxies, causing death and destructing, it, destructing in every country they touch. The Ayatollah's strategy is to stand in the shadow while pulling the strings of their terror proxy puppets. Hamas massacre would not have been possible without Iranian funding, weapons, and training. Hezbollah, with its terror army and 150,000 rockets, would not exist if it were not for their Iranian overlords. Ukrainian civilians would not be murdered with suicide drones without this Iranian-supplied weaponry. The Houthis, terrorists from, one of, terrorists from one of the world's poorest countries, would definitely not have ballistic missiles and explosive drones without the supply of Iranian arms, and they would not have the capabilities to locate and target ships without Iranian intelligence supplied in real time. This cannot be ignored by the Council. Just a week ago, Muhammad Reza Nakdi, a general in the Revolutionary Guard, blatantly threatened that the closure 
of the Mediterranean Sea and the Strait of Gibraltar will be next. Iran is a global danger. The time has come to expose this to the world and take action. This can be the Council's shining moment, the moment it tackles the real, the real threat to the Middle East. The Ayatollah regime is the number one global sponsor of terror. It is flagrantly violating Security Council Resolutions 2231 and 2216. Iran is the architect of regional instability, and it is time to take real action and address the destructive role Iran plays. Mr. President, if we remain idle in the face of the global security threat that is Iran, then the Houthis are just the beginning of a dark future that we will be ushering in, a future in which terror organizations and terror regimes murder, maim, and terrorize with impunity, and this will inspire terrorists around the globe. Let's act now. Thank you, Mr. President.